So I recently watched the sequel trilogy, and because of this my family stopped talking to me, birds fly away from me, and even prostitutes don't even look at me anymore. Saying you enjoyed parts of the sequel trilogy is like a death sentence in 78 countries, so I can't imagine the hate I'm gonna get for this video. Because I genuinely believe that Kylo Ren is the most human character in all of Star Wars, and he is easily in my top 5 Star Wars characters, possibly even top 2, just behind Anakin of course. But again, I know I'm signing my death warrant by saying this, but because I'm a Sigma male and I have to stand on my ground, no matter how many times the Matrix attacks me, I'm gonna stand on my beliefs. Now I do have to say, I'm not like a sequel trilogy enthusiast. I do think it's as good as the prequel trilogy, which I don't even compare to the original trilogy. The original trilogy is still the top dog over here in these streets. But I still think that Kylo Ren is a major highlight in Star Wars in general. I love almost everything about him. I know what I have to do, but I don't know if I have the strength to do it. Kylo Ren's real name is Ben Solo. He was named after Ben Kenobi, and at a young age he was sent to his uncle. Now just like in real life, sending a kid to his uncle's house is not gonna be a fun night for the kid alright. They sent him to be trained by Luke, but who knows if Uncle Luke is even gonna wear pants when training him man. It's just not a smart idea to send an underage kid to their uncle's house on any planet. But because of this, Ben Solo also thought there was something wrong with him. We learn earlier in the lore, Kylo absolutely loved his parents. So when they sent him away, it's like yeah, he's not gonna have a great experience over there and he gets manipulated by Snoke very early on. Now Snoke is a totally different topic. I'll never defend Snoke like I do my boy Kylo. Snoke had so much potential, but this man turned into the biggest letdown in Star Wars history. But in The Force Awakens, Kylo is on like 32 grams of steroids, mixed with like 64 ounces of cocaine. Seven may have helped in the escape. And I really like the side of Kylo. Now sure, they made it a little cringe and a little childish. They added some humor to his rage which was really dumb. I wouldn't be surprised if they tried adding a laugh track on this scene. But scenes of Kylo showing emotion, rather than just being stoic, is one of the many things that I think makes him more human than the rest. But that's a very small example I'll give more later on. But this scene perfectly shows the intentions of the writing behind Kylo Ren, and how he is supposed to be a reverse Vader, which was a very interesting concept. But did you know, did you know that at least you're, you're, you're playing Vader 2.0? Like at least did you know that as yeah. conceptually? I did, yeah, in? yeah. And I had an overall arc that he, in mind that he wanted to do, which, you know, then changed. But his idea was that almost the opposite journey of Vader, where Vader starts the most confident, the most, uh, you know, committed to the dark side. And by, you know, the, um, the last movie, he's... He's the most vulnerable and weak, and he yes. wanted to start at the opposite, where th this character was the most confused and vulnerable, and by the end of the the three movies would be most committed to the dark side. So the, I tried to keep that arc in mind, regardless if that wound up not being the journey anyway. Because, <sighs> because it changed, obviously, yeah, as well, we were shooting. Yeah, yeah, right. Right, but I was still kind of focused on that. Also, you gotta give credit to Adam Driver. He is easily the best actor in a Star Wars project. I mean, even Martin Scorsese said that he may be the best actor in this entire generation. Um, yes, I said, you know, a remarkable screen presence, but truly, uh, how to say it, uh, one of the finest, if not the finest of his generation. You just gotta love Adam Driver, man. But when Kylo meets Rey, it's the first time he treats anyone with respect. Before this he treated everyone like how women treat men under 6 foot. But when he talks to Rey, Rey low-key sees through him. And this is what I mean when Kylo Ren is the most human. Everyone that Kylo has been associated with like Luke, his dad, his mom, or the people against him, and even those who work with him, they all see Kylo as the big bad guy. So he tries becoming the monster they all think he is. So when he sees Rey, who he doesn't kill, and she correctly predicts his insecurity, You're afraid. That you will never be as strong as Darth Vader. Ray toasted Kylo right there. Those burns gotta hurt. And they do. Kylo is trying to become like Darth Vader. He literally jerks off to his helmet like two scenes ago. And the reason why he wants to become like Vader is for another very human reason. He got rejected by his parents. And he got rejected by Luke. 
And a lot of people when they get rejected by loved ones, they tend to become the things that loved ones hate the most. And Kylo Ren's loved ones hate the Empire on the dark side. So Kylo Ren turns into a Nazi. Now I'm okay. I'm not sure if he's got the right idea, but the Nazis were kind of the dark side. I'm not sure if Kylo Ren wants to become like Vader or Hitler, but at least he's ambitious. And either one is gonna piss off his parents. And I really like this narrative choice. It's a very human thing to do. And Kylo doesn't like the fact that he may not be fully evil. Like growing up with loving parents and having an uncle who didn't molest you are things that Kylo Ren has in the back of his head. Deep down Kylo knows his parents were looking after him, but Kylo just doesn't want to understand them. He is in some incredible pain that he blames dumb, and obviously Luke. Because even though Luke didn't molest him, Luke did try killing him, which again I'll get to that later on. But this narrative choice for Kylo Ren is much more human than anything we get in Star Wars, and I love it. I personally don't relate to it at all, but the writers knew what they were doing with Kylo here. Kylo's conflict with the Force is totally different than Anakin's conflict with the Force. I mean, that was always the thing with Anakin, watching the movies and reading the novels. You get this feeling that he was destined to become a Sith. The boy was born into bondage, freed, then separated from his mother and brought to a world he did not understand. His personal frustrations, anger, and general lack of control of his emotions, coupled with the interference of Palpatine, suggested he was only ever going to become a Sith. His fall to the dark side was sad, but inevitable. Kylo Ren, however, essentially has the potential to be both good and bad. I think this was the reason that Snoke is and was so determined to corrupt him. Ren is the middle point of both the dark side and the light, with potential to head in either way. Now let's talk about the scene that most people hate, the death of Han Solo. Now I don't think the hate towards Han's death is even close to the amount of hate that Luke's death gets, and I'm pretty happy about that, because I think Kylo killing Han was pretty well done. Did Han deserve a death like this? Nah. So from Han's perspective, this scene was awful, but if you're like me, and you're a proud Kylo Ren meat muncher, the scene is pretty good. Kylo kills Han, and it fits his character. Kylo didn't know he was going to kill Han here, and when he did, he was not mad at himself right after. Again, this is another very human trait that I love. When he slices Han Solo, I don't think Kylo is conflicted here. He genuinely thinks he is Vader 2.0, and he thinks he is fully consumed by the dark side. It's only afterwards he realized that he was not thinking straight. And just the way the dialogue is delivered here is just so perfect. Kylo Ren is trying to bury Ben Solo. So he says things like, your son was weak and your son is gone. Your son is gone. He was weak and foolish like his father. So I destroyed him. Anakin Skywalker was weak. I destroyed him. The brilliance of Adam Driver's line delivery is highlighted in this scene. With Vader and Rebels, you can tell he is much more confident in himself. Kylo Ren is not. When Han is on the bridge with him, I don't think Kylo knows what he's going to do yet. Yes, he wants to kill his father, but for him, that's still a very hard thing to do. I'm being torn apart. Kylo Ren's attachment to the light brings him pain, and that's at least how I read this scene. In that moment, he believes that if he can kill his father, he will be fully entrenched in the dark side, and that pain will no longer exist, and he goes through with it. Now, The Last Jedi is one of the most controversial movies of all time. Now, I'm just gonna say straight up, I totally understand the hate for this movie. I think Star Wars purists who dislike this movie are totally justified. I totally understand. Like me personally, I'm a huge Game of Thrones book purist. The Game of Thrones books are my bread and butter. So I imagine the way I see Game of Thrones season 5 to 8 is how Star Wars fans see this movie. But me personally, I'm just not a diehard Star Wars loyalist. So I didn't care that much about the character assassination of Luke. Is Luke good in this movie? Nah. Is he terrible in this movie? Also not really. Could most people have written him better? Yeah, 100%. But that's a topic for another video. But Kylo in The Last Jedi thrives. Blow that piece of junk out of the sky! I want every gun we have to fire on that man. Kylo and Ray's force communication or whatever is amazing. This is basically Star Wars FaceTime, but you always have to answer. But when Kylo and Ray do meet each other, Kylo has a lot of respect for Ray. I'm not sure if there's like a romantic thing here or something. I mean, Ray is cute as fuck. She is the full-on baddie on all types of planets. So I totally understand if my boy Kylo here is trying to score, but who knows. But I really love how Kylo kills Snoke in front of Rey. Rey is basically Kylo's only shot at someone seeing him as a decent person. He wants her to understand him, so not only does he kill his abuser, he kills him to help her. 
So she arguably sees the start of Kylo's redemption arc, even though his redemption arc didn't even last. I want you to join me. We can rule together and bring a new order to the galaxy. Don't do this, man. Please don't go this way. No, no, you're still holding on! Let go! Now Kylo goes after Luke, and this is where I really love Kylo, because this was something that was supposed to happen. The original script for Kylo is that he is supposed to be with the dark side now more than ever, and that's exactly it right here. For the third act of this movie, Kylo walks around with his dick out, not caring about anyone or anything. And I truly think that this version of Kylo Ren truly is happy that he game ended his dad. This is pretty dark, but unfortunately for Kylo it's not dark enough. He's still not taken seriously. The resistance is dead. The war is over. And when I kill you, I will have killed the last Jedi. Amazing. Every word of what you just said was wrong. So Kylo is just doing his thing now. He ended his father. He technically ended Luke. He also ended Snoke. And that's something that I didn't even talk about much. Kylo killing Snoke is by far his biggest mental block because he wrongfully blamed his parents. But with Snoke, he is still being groomed by Snoke. So the fact that he actually takes him out is much more some hype shit. And the way he did it was so cool. Because as the gold man said, it was very Han Solo like. But there are a few details you may or may not have missed. And because this is a small detail I honestly didn't notice until like the 20th time I've watched this film. When this scene begins, Kylo definitely had the intention of killing Snoke but he has no clue how he's going to do it. When the lightsaber comes flying and lands right in front of him spinning, I think that is when he got the idea to kill Snoke with the other lightsaber. He saw a spinning saber on the ground and thought to himself, let me go spin the other saber and kill Snoke. If you think about it, that's a very Han Solo type of thing to do. Go into a dangerous situation just 100% winging it. It shows that Ben really is Han's son. Now Rise of Skywalker is indefensible. This movie is something that I wouldn't torture a terrorist with. It is bad. And even Kylo Ren is not great in this movie, man. He had a weird redemption arc thing, which was not at all what I was expecting. And they basically just copied and pasted Vader and Luke, but with Kylo and Rey, and they added some romantic tension. But the highlight of this movie for Kylo was with Han. Now Han is dead, and Han doesn't really have the force, so seeing his ghost was actually kind of weird. But as many YouTubers pointed out, this is Kylo mentally changing. He's forgiving himself. I don't think it was fantastically executed, but it works with Kylo for how much he is conflicted. And after this moment, he is no longer conflicted. He is big boy Ben Solo, and there's a lot more of himself. And he just moves a lot more freely. Obviously Adam Driver is the main reason why Kylo is even possible in this movie, but can't blame Adam Driver for his amazing acting. So yeah, I thought the Ben and Han scene was actually somewhat cool, especially with this easter egg. Dad. But yeah, Rise of Skywalker overall is indefensible. Somehow Palpatine returned. Kylo should have had a Force Ghost, but I honestly don't even think he should have died. It would have been so much cooler if he lived, like Vader didn't. But this movie was just whack as hell. Like if Adam Driver wasn't possibly the best actor of our generation, this movie would have been a 0 out of 10. I just had sex, I'm about to eat nachos! It's the greatest moment of my life! But yeah, that's why I think Kylo is truly one of the goats of Star Wars, and is super overhated because of the stigma of the sequel trilogy. And this motherfucker is one of my favorite characters of all time. But yeah, that's it for this video. Like, subscribe, and peace, peace.